fix on Dash Radio. Get the shit. What up, what up, what up? We're back, we're back. Man, he be he doing his thing over there, you know what I'm saying? I know, you got me over here rocking. <laughs> Goodness. But go ahead and tell us who we got in the building so we can go ahead and get into this interview. Man, today, Jamal Johnson's going to tell us what's goody. He is an actor, a film, and TV producer. What's up? Tell everybody what's up. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing fantastic. The music is playing amazing. I'm, I'm you're looking amazing. Uh-oh. Everybody's looking ama- amazing. Uh-oh. I'm feeling real good. <laughs> <laughs> feeling the vibe in here. Feeling absolutely, the vibe, man. Absolutely. So go ahead and tell the listeners about your show, Two Wrongs. Absolutely. So Two Wrongs is an award-winning short film. Um, just was re- released on Amazon Prime about four weeks ago. Okay. And uh, we won three awards, two nominated um, uh, awards as well. We uh, won awards here in United States. We've been nominated in Italy, and wow. uh, the the film is actually released in ten countries. Okay. And so we're really excited about it. Uh, it's basically the story of a single father with a troubled past that dreams of creating a better life for his um, daughter. And so it goes through all the trials and tribulations that he has to go through to create a better life for his daughter. And, uh, we touched on a lot of things that's going on today in society that everybody knows about, like uh, racial profiling, bullying, just social injust- injustices. And so we were really excited to put this project out there, both domestically and internationally. And we've been, it's been well received so far. So we're really excited about it. You being a father, did that have a huge influence on you uh, doing this project? It absolutely did. Um, I'm a father of two now. I have a uh, 12-year-old daughter, and I also have a five-month-old. So it it was, when the script was brought to me, it immediately resonated with me, the storyline and just the, the different trials and tribulations the character had to go through to try to make a better life for his daughter. And, I mean, I had a direct relation to that because I do so many things today for my children. And so... Um, when the script was brought to me, I said, you know, this is amazing. I have to be a part of it. You know, I, I personally felt a connection to it. And so I said, you know what? I definitely want to do this. So um, coming out with the film, has there been anyone that reached out to you directly saying how it had a positive impact on them? Absolutely. I definitely have. Um, the Souk Film Festival is one of the uh, film festivals that uh, we were nominated for for Best Short Film in Italy. And so... When they sent, uh, they sent over this formal letter, and it was a beautiful letter uh, that just expressed how the film resonated in Europe as well. And so it, that made me feel good. It made, obviously, the writer and director and producers feel good, as long, along with the cast members, and how this, this film resonated to people not just here in the United States, but overseas as well. And yeah. so that was a true testament to show how impactful this film was. And, and, and you know, the short film is only 12 minutes. Okay. And so it, that really shows people that if you have the right project, it doesn't have to be an hour and a half or two hours long. It can make an impact in a small period of time, but people will, it will sit with them forever. And how, long, how long did it take for you to shoot the film? Um, so we shot it over a, a period of, I think it was like four or five days, okay. but... Uh, you know, there's always a lot of pre-production involved with the project. Uh, it was about, I think, we had about five months of pre-production. I was involved as a producer on the film as well. This is one of the first projects I had an opportunity to produce. And when I was approached to do this um, do this film by the, the writer-director, because it, it resonated with me so much, I asked him, I, I said, hey, I want to be uh, produce this project with you. Can yeah. I produce this project with you? And and you know a lot of a lot of people would probably have said no you have no experience (laughs) but because i because it resonated with me so much and i think he could see that in my eyes and my actions that he gave me the opportunity and so i was involved with a lot of the legwork with the behind the scenes it was my first time producing a film and which gave me the inspiration to, to produce more projects as well but Absolutely. Uh, I think the overall, as far as the timing, the time process is concerned, it probably took about six months Mm -hmm. between pre-production, principal principal photography, and post-production. Okay. Why is it that you don't think that we make 
enough films where we focus on single fathers? Um, because it's not the... That's a great question, by the way. But I think it's because it's not the most uh, uh, sexy thing for pe for the audience to go and see. Nowadays, in today's... Uh, I feel like in today's world, there they have a lot to do with... A lot of films have a lot to do with immediate gratification and the like w action, everything that's going to really resonate mm. internationally. I mean, this film did resonate internationally, but we were lucky to do so, I think, because there's a lot of things going on in yeah. the world, you know, in society. But I, I think in, in this day and age, production studios really like to focus on the blockbusters, the ones that they know are going to have the, the high-end returns. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a movie like, like Two Wrongs, it's a uh, it's a it's a risk, and when you have movies that talk about single fathers, it's a risk because you you know sometimes studios don't want to take that risk on wondering how a film like this showing single parenting is going to actually resonate with the audience because mm -hmm. you know people want to see the perfect life they want to see two parents they want to see all those things and so and they want to see you know fantasies and all those things and so they're like hey well I don't know maybe do we really want to put the put the card in here to see if it's going to make us the money back, I'm not quite sure. Mm. And so when I think a film like this that, that has been successful in, in, in an early stage, it I think it will open the doors to other produ uh, producers, production studios, to maybe take a consideration to films that have similar themes that people of the world can see. Mm. So as an actor, tell me what's the biggest project that you've done? <sighs> wow. Um, well, as an actor, I'm going to say the biggest project that I've done is this one because I <laughs> this is I like my, that. <laughs> this is this is my first actual lead role. I've done films where you know uh, and TV shows and stuff and theater as well, uh, where I've played supporting characters and stuff. But I feel like this is probably the biggest one because this is the first project that I've done that has won awards, and it's my first true leading role. Mm -hmm. And it's really probably the first, uh, like, project that really, really hit home for me. You know, there's a lot of, um, I think a lot of actors, we, we all can say that you want to find that project that really hits home with you that, that can be timeless. And I feel like this is one of those timeless projects that I've had the opportunity to do. And, you know, there's a lot of pre prep pre uh pre-prep that I had to do mentally to be involved with this project because I, even though that, even though uh, there was some relationship, relatable aspects of me as a person with the actual character, Devin, who I played in the role, he was very different than me. So there was a lot of kind of research that I had to do that was relatable to this character, but it really hit home and that's why I, I think I definitely can say this is my biggest project. So what do you feel is going to be your follow-up to this since you had so much success with this? The follow-up <sighs> got to be something big, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's up in the air right now. I mean, I, I am. I just finished doing a, a, a pilot comedy uh, okay. for On Demand Project. Uh, it's called Down and Out, and uh, I can't mention the On Demand Network, but mm. look for it probably in the late summer. It's funny. I play actually uh, a music producer okay. in the role. So the music, the the music producer to one of the lead characters who uh, is hilarious, by the way. So mm -hmm. it's actually written by, it's written and directed by the same individual who wrote and directed Two Wrongs. And so I think that's kind of how the the director, the writer director Andy Cruz, he he works at Netflix. He um, he, we were starting to build a relationship together, kind of similar to Michael B. Jordan and Ryan Coogler. Okay. And yeah. so, you know, when you're working with somebody and you, you kind of understand them and how they operate, we tend to do more projects together. And we have a few in the works. That's one of them. Uh, we've been shooting shooting that one. And uh, we have another one uh, that I, called The Power of Will, which I can't talk too much about, mm -hmm. but I think that will be a fantastic follow-up. Do you enjoy taking on roles that give you a challenge where you have to seek to correlate with that character and really get to the gritty of like what it what it is to bring that character to life? Absolutely. I, I think all um, a lot of actors love to try to do roles that really give them that emotional spark. Mm. And 
this role did that. I mean, yes, what I love to do, uh, action films where I'm, you know, whooping ass. 100%. Mm-hmm. I'm 6'4", 240 pounds. I want to whoop some ass, too. But at the same You're time... you trying to floss on the <laughs> listeners. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I am a very muscular human being. Um, but <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> but, um, hey. no, absolutely... You better get your guns up. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, absolutely. Um, I, I, I would love I love to do things that, that give me an emotional challenge. Yeah. This did that uh, mm-hmm. tremendously. Uh, I remember... Um, we had one one day, just going back to two wrongs, we had a 24-hour shoot day. I was up 24 hours. And one of the scenes, uh, it was challenging, challenging, challenging. And the director and I kind of got into it. But at the end, um, it, it came out to be masterful. But mm-hmm. to, to, to go back to what you said, it was an emotional challenge. And I love to do, I, I love to do those projects that kind of bring the best out of me, that really dig into the depths and say, hey, what can you do? I want you to sh- show me something. Show me something, Jamal. And so, um, yeah, I, I definitely uh, love doing those type of projects. So your film, I mean, your short film is based on, like, current things and, you know, things of the past, too, right. that we've always been dealing with. Mm-hmm. You know, currently we have R. Kelly in Uh-oh. the news. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know, Uh-oh. And some of his <laughs> closet things. Do you see yourself possibly creating a film that really shines light on that? Because he's not the first person to take on those types of acts. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if the right project is brought to me, I absolutely mm-hmm. would. I, I mean, it's... I, I haven't had... Would the, you play R. Kelly in a film? If the right script is brought to me, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay. If the right script is brought to me. Right. You know... I, you got I, the bald head. Yeah, you, ready, you know, you know? <laughs> I, I would say... I can't, I can't sing, but I, I'm an actor, so I can <laughs> okay. impersonate it. But at the same time, it has to make sense. Yeah. It has to make sense. I mean... I haven't had the opportunity to watch Surviving R. Kelly, but I'm familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I'm a reader, so I read I read a lot of stuff that's going on. It's a very yeah. unfortunate thing. And, uh, you know, it's disheartening because I grew up listening to R. Kelly songs. Yeah. I mean, the 12 plays to, you know, all those things. He had mm-hmm. legendary music. And to hear, especially being a father. Yeah. Especially being a father, to hear those things is it was truly disheartening, man. Yeah. It's, 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 it's sad, man, because you know you don't want to you don't want to have somebody who you were just looked at as a musical icon and music mm. in that day and age to 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 have revealed those things about him, because it kind of in me in my opinion, unfortunately, it discredits. A lot of the artistic capabilities of African Americans, in some ways, because now you get, oh, okay, well, if that person is talented, you know, maybe he has something in the closet like R. Kelly. Yeah. You know, so um, it's an unfortunate thing. But just to going back to, if the right script came to me, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be opposed to it. But it would have to be the right, right script. script, like on a level of like a biopic of a James Brown. Like the production has to. It be, would have it to be, be like a lifetime. Yeah, no, no. It would have to be. Thing. Yeah, it would have yeah. to be equivalent to you know the Chad, the the James Brown, like you said, yeah. Chadwick Boseman did a phenomenal job yeah. in that movie. Yeah. I mean, he was phenomenal. Yeah. You know, people know Chadwick Boseman. I tell people this all the time. I mean, he did a phenomenal in Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. Like he was phenomenal he in that. all the superheroes, yeah. the black. I mean, he, I mean, <laughs> exactly, right? All of them. From from the real ones to the fictional don't even, ones. Don't even be looking like the fictional, the, yeah. the real ones. You know, absolutely. You look like so Jackie Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> but he did a good. He job, did a though. good job. Yeah, yeah, but it would have to be something on that level because that's it's such a fine line with that story. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Man, so I definitely want to see more of the things that you come with in the future. Absolutely. If you're ever looking for a female actress, Codigo Red's available. All yeah, right. I am. You know. I am available. Yes. <laughs> to anyone who is listening, there it is. Codigo Red <laughs> is ready. Yes, yes. But tell people where they can find you on social media and tell them, you know, just anything else you want to leave them, you know, as you know, you make your exit out the fix. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I always like to leave the listeners with, like a little key point that I always use to push myself, which is all is to continue to be a dream chaser. Mm. Um, I've been through a lot of things in my life, ups and downs. And, you know, if I didn't stay optimistic about believing that 
I will overcome these struggles. Mm -hmm. Being an actor is a tough thing. I mean, until you get that that magical opportunity, you're struggling. I mean, I've done everything from, you know, working in insurance to education to, I mean, all type of things, man, just hustling, hustling, hustling. But you stay on that path and you focus, you say, hey, I'm going to be dedicated, determined, and disciplined to chase my dreams. They will happen. Mm -hmm. Like, the dreams don't work unless you do, man. So that's kind of what, what I want to want to leave out to my 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 audience there and as far as uh, social media is concerned you can find me on Facebook uh, the real Jamal Johnson Instagram Jamal Johnson double underscore and same thing with Twitter Jamal Johnson double underscore you heard it Jamal Johnson make sure you go follow my guy and that is our first interview for the day we're gonna take a quick break listen to the fix on Dash Talk X yeah <laughs> 